personalized medicine is about tailoring the treatments to the characteristics and the needs and the preference of each individual patient. The concept of personalized medicine is not new. But what is new is um, the very rapid change in medical science and technologies and also the increasing use of e-health and also the patient involvement. And this all together, that will fundamentally change our healthcare model that is now based on a one-size-fits-all approach. In my view, the entire issue of personal medicine is about individual risk assessment. So this will have important consequences for the way uh, the healthcare system is organized because we will need to be able to be more precise uh, in this risk assessment. Actually, some people use the term precision medicine rather than personalized medicine. The question, I guess, is how can technology and, and more specifically computer science help us to move towards precision medicine? For the monitoring purposes of their patients, they have e-health. So the e-health will allow them to have a full and continuous and real-time picture of their patients so that if something goes wrong, they can intervene immediately and change the treatment if necessary. What matters is not the technology, but what matters is healthcare and how healthcare can be better provided or can be more, more sustainably provided uh, uh, we, by using the technology. Cystic fibrosis is a very good example on how personalized medicine can make a step change. Recently there has been an FDA approval for a new drug in cystic fibrosis and this new drug was developed by scientists that used the new omics technologies to really define the problem of cystic fibrosis at the molecular level. And then they, de they developed a drug specifically targeting that molecular problem. And now you can see that the patients who are treated with that, that drug have a fantastic improvement in, in lung function, in, in, in weight and in quality of life. And it will certainly also have an effect on their survival. As benefits of, of e-health, I see, first of all, helping to move the place of care from the hospital, from the acute environment, to home care or even to the pocket of the citizen. As a benefit, e-health can also help the patient to be more responsible, to be more better informed. And this is where apps have a huge potential, not just in helping you monitor you know, your vital signs, your, your blood glucose, your blood pressure, whatever it happens to be, but also for things like um, psychosocial support, which is very important. So when they actually do get to see their clinician or GP, they can actually talk about the real issues and not waste that valuable time in duplicated tests or, or whatever else. I think that there will be changes at several levels. First, at the level of the individual. Before you develop the disease, you eventually might be involved in a sort of remote monitoring that will alert you and, and your clinician uh, of your risk of uh, developing such a disease. So, so the patient or the pre-patient, that is the individual who has not already developed a disease, I think will be very important. Then of course, the healthcare professional uh, will have to adapt, will have to learn how to implement that in the clinic. And the healthcare system will have to provide the computer support and the technological support to um, allow the physician to implement this knowledge. There will be a shift from a doctor tells what is best for you towards what is the best option for this particular patient. Oh, well, apart from obviously being able to capture your own data and then share it um, with your uh, healthcare professional, it will give a much better overview of your daily health over a longer period of time. 
so that you're not just seeing these very small snapshots of how a patient is performing. Patients will be much better informed because they have access to the internet, they can um, participate in forums, etc. So they will be much better empowered to take part in the discussions about their own treatment, so they know more. Uh, and on the other hand, if they are informed about, for example, a gene-associated increased risk for certain uh, chronic conditions, that is likely to improve their adherence to the treatment and ultimately it will also lead to better outcomes. The care that the healthcare system will provide, will the quality of the care will be probably improved. Um, the bad part for the healthcare system is that this is going to be expensive. So how to manage and to balance uh, the improving quality care and the sustainability, financial sustainability of the healthcare system uh, will have to be debated. We are now becoming more precise. Okay? So first challenge is a knowledge challenge. Then we'll have a technology challenge, where how to um, put together this uh, information. There will be also financial challenges. Who is going to pay for this? There's a lot of work being, wor uh, being, being done in silos. And uh, multimorbidity is a topic that is of, of, of prime importance, where doctors or some are, are, are claiming, are pleading to look at the human being from a much more holistic point of view. You cannot do that if you are not exchanging data. Who owns that information? What use can be done of that information? Okay. You don't necessarily want your um, data sold to a third-party broker. It could end up with an insurer, it could end up anyway. So there's a lot of work going on at EU and uh, global level on that. The, the young generation of citizens is much more open to, uh, to collaboration and to, ch and, and to share data and share information. So I don't think that this will be the biggest challenge. For me, the biggest challenge uh, for the moment is really, to, uh, uh, is really about uh, how to deploy, uh, how to make it happening, how to go from, from the lab or from the, from the clinical experience, from, from, the, from, the, from the, the clinical studies, how to move from there to real life. And the ERS can help at different levels to help to implement these changes. For example, it can bring together uh, the scientists and clinicians to discuss and to evaluate the new targeted treatments. And it can also advocate at the political level, the importance of personalized medicine, in particular at the European Commission and the European Parliament. We will be much better informed and we will use uh, the newest technologies to monitor our disease. We will, as patients, take the lead. The value of having these enormous potential data sets is a massive benefit and advantage for research, particularly for areas of you know, rare disease where it's extremely difficult to recruit patients for sufficient numbers of patients for clinical trials, when you can do that over a much wider geographical area. So there will be significant change in the way to go to the hospital or not to go to the hospital in the way to stay at home and, uh, and have uh, a home as, as a place for getting care. I firmly believe that um, this personalized approach to treat patients will lead to much better outcomes and um, I also hope that this personalized medicine will really change the way we treat patients so that it will go from treatment to prevention and that the per patients who already have diseases now will be cured with personalized medicine.